Making phone calls on the go wasn't enough when cell phones broke into the mainstream. The devices that could connect us to anybody also turned into some pretty powerful gaming machines, and the integration of games on phones was there from the very beginning. The evolution of mobile gaming has transitioned from quick time wasters into a huge billion dollar force, which helped put an end to portable gaming consoles. See what company deserves a ton more credit and how the PS5 and Xbox Series X will rely on cell phone gaming more than ever. Well before the widespread use of cell phones, playing games on the go had always been a thing. Graphing calculators in the 80s were loaded with text-based games. Tiger Electronics had a whole market of cheap handhelds, and gamers could not get enough of the Nintendo Game Boy when it was released in 1989. The rise of cell phones in the 90s not only changed the way we communicated, but it changed the world of gaming as well. And just like how the original Game Boy was bundled with Tetris, the first cell phone game was Tetris as well. Released all the way back in 1994, the Haganook MT2000 was preloaded with a built-in Tetris that made the Game Boy version look like a 4K television. And despite the lackluster pixels, mobile gaming was born. But it took a while to catch on. Not only did the cell phone market need to grow, but so did the technology used to play the games. While companies like Apple and Samsung dominate the market now, one company deserves a lot more credit. Nokia. Nokia was once a leader in the world of cell phones, and they helped lead the way with a simple game, Snake. Preloaded into over 400 million devices, Snake has become one of the most played games of all time and led to an industry which often earns billions more than home gaming consoles on an annual basis. While current phones offer easy access to apps and games, it wasn't so easy back in the day. To get a game you loved, you needed to find a phone with the game loaded on it already. As data connections became available, so did the opportunity to download games. Classics like Bubble Bobble were available in mobile form, and new games were rapidly being developed. Unfortunately, phone users would have to pay for the game and the data costs for the download. Just like the era when we all paid $1.99 for a 30-second ringtone of the latest Maroon 5 song, game downloads were costly and lacked a lot of replay value. Phone upgrades only helped games grow and thrive. As camera technology improved in phones, so did the gaming aspects. Full-color screens led to better graphics, and bigger screens led to more options for in-game action. A majority of cell phones were vertically based, so games like Tetris and Bubble Bobble would thrive. Well, the orientation really changed with the release of the Nokia N-Gage in 2003. Aiming to combine cell phones with portable games, the N-Gage was held horizontally, kind of looked like a taco, and presented a true combination of gaming with cell phone use. The phone definitely had a lot of problems, though. When you purchase an N-Gage game, you'd have to remove the plastic case and battery pack just to insert the cartridge. While you could get used to the controls for games, making calls was awkward, and Nokia should have perfected the design a little bit more before releasing the device. The main positive comes in the form of games. 3D graphics were impressive for the time. Releases including sports games, popular characters like Sonic the Hedgehog, and even a Sims spin-off. Despite pretty poor sales, Nokia showcased how gaming could advance in cell phones and how to expand the limitations. Getting the design right was an important aspect, and BlackBerry helped lead the way with their Curve series of phones in the early 2000s. The Curve blew up the mobile market with the full keyboard implementation, larger screen, and gaming options on the OS. For a while, it seemed like BlackBerry phones would set the precedent for all future smartphone gaming, but one company easily drove BlackBerry into the ground. Apple. Apple saw what Nokia was doing with games and decided to up the ante. For years, we saw how Apple put games into their iPods, but this was only the beginning. The 2007 release of the Apple iPhone changed the way cell phone games were downloaded and played in so many ways. Wi-Fi connections allowed for faster download speeds without wasting data. The all-touchscreen surface included digital on-screen controllers, easy game learning, and interactive features never before seen in games. Players would download games directly from the App Store. Free games were abundant, along with a majority of game purchases for less than $5. A focus on quick action and puzzle games really became the forefront of the mobile gaming world. Games weren't just released, they became cultural sensations. 2009's Angry Birds led the way. The animated puzzle app became a sensation which led to toys, movies, and licensed spin-offs like Angry Birds Star Wars. We may be sick of Angry Birds now, but the game was all the rage and represented why mobile gaming was so successful. You could quickly jump into games. Novice gamers didn't need to learn a complicated controller, simply tap and drag. 
Lively characters, fun power-ups, and addictive gaming only helped the franchise grow. The Android smartphone market was growing at the same time, leading to the rise of Google Play as a viable contender against the App Store. Along with Angry Birds, we saw other games like Doodle Jump, Fruit Ninja, and Temple Run quickly gain steam. They not only became the water cooler talk, but ways to pass time at the water cooler, or even during a work shift. Candy Crush represents the peak of quick access mobile gaming. And not to mention all of the Candy Crush knockoffs like Disney Emoji Blitz, Shrek Sugar Fever, and WWE Champions where you would smash symbols to earn wrestling moves and power-ups. Candy Crush was one of the front-runners in a whole new gaming genre known as the freemium game. Traditional consoles featured a fully packaged game with a set price and some DLC down the line. But you knew everything you were getting with a set price. Freemium apps would lure gamers in with a free download and pile up the costs down the line. You could pay for extra lives, expand your land in Farmville, purchase new skins, and skip levels all with just a tap of a button. The lower cost of the extras were appealing to users and allowed mobile gaming companies to generate billions in sales worldwide. One of the more successful apps in the realm is The Simpsons Tapped Out. Originally released in 2012, players could build their own version of Springfield. Upgrades and expansions could go quicker with the purchase of donuts, the in-game currency. Still going strong, the game has generated over $200 million in sales for EA games. A majority of console games don't have the same shelf life as games like Tapped Out. Better data connections, Wi-Fi, and the widespread use of 4G networks led to more multiplayer games on mobile devices. Mobile games like Draw Something and Words with Friends connected people together in whole new ways. Other games like Clash of Clans represented action-styled gaming with 3D graphics. The rise of 3D games on phones also crossed paths with the world of VR gaming. Phones with built-in accelerometers and gyroscopes allowed players to strap on VR headsets, slip their phone in, and enjoy a lot of gimmick games. Google led the way with the budget-friendly cardboard app and headset. Flight games like End Space had basic movement controls but lacked true VR features found in standalone VR headsets. While the interactive games were fun and immersive, they missed out on what makes mobile games so fun – the easy access and on-the-go options. Even though VR games were hit or miss, the advancements in cell phones gave gamers a chance to play games at more locations than just a doctor's office waiting room or on the school bus. Augmented reality transformed games, and mobile users really took notice with the release of Pokémon GO. The app became a sensation in 2016, as people took to the streets, parks, and local businesses to catch Pokémon using advanced GPS technology. The release of Pokémon GO led to a lot of other apps looking to take advantage. Jurassic World Alive was released in 2018, and The Walking Dead Our World turned your camera view into a zombie invasion. Besides Pokémon Go, a lot of the apps were seen more as a gimmick as the popularity quickly faded. After the success of Pokémon Go, Nintendo jumped onto the gaming app bandwagon with some of their popular franchises. After years of reluctance, Super Mario Run was released in 2016, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp in 2017, and Mario Kart Tour in 2019. Now you could carry Nintendo games on the go without the need of a 3DS. Even Nintendo saw how smartphones changed portable gaming forever. Bigger screens, faster processors, and clear connections have led to console-style gaming on mobile devices. Large world games like Roblox and Minecraft released mobile versions with many of the same features. 2018 saw the release of Fortnite Battle Royale for both iOS and Android. Fortnite helped usher in some high-quality gaming on the handheld devices. Along with the on-screen controls, gamers had access to a wide range of Bluetooth controllers. The controllers would connect quickly and provide true gaming options without the need to constantly tap the screen. The use of an analog stick and trigger buttons made a huge difference when playing shooters like Fortnite. When gaming companies wanted to make mobile ports of games, a whole new app code was needed, and the app version of games often lacked a lot of the full game features. Well, as we head into the future of mobile gaming, the world of console and portable games are blending into one. Why play a third-rate adaptation of Call of Duty when you could play the actual thing? Welcome to Remote Play. Instead of wasting space and pushing phone processors to the limit, cloud-based gaming is new normal in mobile gaming. The PS4 already offers the Remote Play app. When you are connected to the same network, you can use your Android or Apple phone to play your PS4 game library. 
Currently, the service is limited to the same network, but expansions will offer cloud gaming on the go. Sony also offers PlayStation Now, a cloud-based gaming app which could expand to mobile devices in the future. Microsoft has the same plans in mind, starting with the Xbox game streaming app. Currently only available in a preview mode, gamers can connect directly to their Xbox One, or through their new CloudX streaming platform. As the PS5 and Xbox Series X plan their holiday arrival, expect to see a big shift in the mobile gaming connection. Players' expectations will naturally rise and console games could quickly overtake App Store downloads. Of course, we always want a new Candy Crush-style game for quick options on the go. Mobile games are always evolving as players look for the next big form of entertainment. As phones improve, so do the games, and gaming will be tied into our phones for the foreseeable future. Okay, yeah, we still play Angry Birds every now and then. What's your go-to mobile gaming app? What's the most you've ever spent on a freemium app? Do you like the idea of console gaming on your cell phone? Well, let us know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to The Gamer for more great content.